What's going on, everybody? It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Power. This is season six, episode six, Inside Man. Before we get into the review, if you haven't done so just yet, go ahead, subscribe to your Auntie channel. Do it. Let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, this episode was good. Tyreek. 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 You playing a dangerous game, young buck. You playing a real... I ain't never wanted a youngster to get popped off as much as I want Tyrese to get popped off. I mean, not Ty Tyreek ass to get popped off. Y'all, I'm already jumping ahead. Hopefully, y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. Hopefully, y'all are ready. I got my Kool-Aid and my Ciroc and I got my water. Water on the rocks. It's called balance, people. Okay? Get you some in your life. So, it picks up where the episode left off last time. Then the amusement park, after dark, that was the meetup spot where Vincent had Tyreek. Now, Tyreek is in the car, right? So, Vincent is going back to the car. He telling Tyreek, because as soon as he gets there, Tyreek, like, what they say. Vincent was like, you sure enough right. As long as they think that you in danger, they willing to do anything for your ass. Reek like, I told you. Now, like I said, as soon as they give you that money, we gonna split it 50-50. Just like I said, just like the plan is. Vincent like, oh, for sure. Vincent go, to Brown to get, uh, go around to get on his side of the car. Vincent homeboy pull him to the side like, hey, why you trust this little dude? That's Ghost's son. Like, why do you trust him? Vincent like, I don't trust him. But Ghost and Tommy dumbass about to pay me two mil soon as i get this money i'm taking out ghost tommy and i'm taking out tyree so don't worry about it we about to get paid off these fools so we see ghost and tommy they sitting up there talking trying to figure something out ghost telling tommy like look here i need you to get your primaries out there i need you to get them out there moving this way tommy like don't worry about it we got our thing we're gonna do our thing i just need you to make sure that you're gonna be ready and do what you gotta do ghost like look here tommy we ain't got time for this back and forth stuff right here tommy like look here I told Reek he wasn't built for this life. No doggone way. Ghost gonna say, oh, so you knew about it? Tell me like, yeah, what? I was gonna take a time out from us killing each other to let you know what Reek was doing? Yeah, I knew about it. And I told him he wasn't built for this life. We ain't boys. Let you know that now. We working together. I don't work for you. Ghost like, you know what? You show sure right. We ain't boys. We brothers. So for the sake of my son, your godson, can we pull a truce uh, to this right now so we can work on getting Reek back? He like, all right, that's cool. But look here. We got to move this way and we got to move this way quick i can get the uh weight but i ain't got no clean money so i'm gonna need you to work on give me some clean money ghost like you know what don't even worry about it i got somebody that can do it for you this fool go over to see councilman tate councilman tate look at ghost like nigga what i ain't got that kind of money to be giving you what the hell is you talking about nah uh-uh ghost like look here i have it back at no time don't worry about it i know it ain't nothing but a phone call away all you gotta do is make the phone call tell them that you need to use this money for this that and the other councilman take like look here i can't be taking money away from my project my campaign and i'm trying to run you know nick trying to be the governor around here what the hell is it that you trying to do ghost like look here i got something i need to do and i need you to go ahead and give me this meal right now you know what I'm saying? So I can get done what the hell I need to get done. Take on say, nigga, the hell with you and your time. I ain't giving you none of my doggone money. Ghost like, look here, bruh. Don't get it twisted. Don't forget that I got a recording of you and um, Alfonso or Alphonse, whatever the dude name is, where you uh, admitting to skimming money off the Queen Child Project to do whatever the hell it is you got to do with this money that you're skimming off the top. So nigga, don't do me. Take like, look here, the accountants are going to be looking at every cent of this right before the, the voting election or whatever that is going on. So I need you to return this money to me ASAP. Go say he going to have it back to him within 24 hours. Just make the phone call like I said. He makes phone call. Well, right before he makes the phone call, Tay say, look here, I want to let you know. I ain't your bitch. You got it twisted. Ghost like, uh-huh, yeah, I remember that. Go ahead and make the call. Jason comes to Tommy's trap house. Jason is dropping off all this weight. These fools is out here in doggone forklifts getting all this doggone product and he's surprised because tommy got a check for him like over for a million two million something like that so he like dang what you need all of this work for like what's going on tommy tell him i got a real motivated customer he like oh yeah and who is this customer so i'm like you know don't worry about it it's just somebody i'm dealing with now of course he don't want him to know that it's ghost because if he knows that he's working with ghosts then he knows it's gonna be a doggone problem and daddy what he won't 
Ghost talks with Dre. He tells Dre that he needs to get him and his premieres out there on, on the street because he needs them to move this way also. Now, Dre is telling um, Ghost basically like, you know, I got the fans on me. I got sacks on me. You know, I can't be moving weight like this. Ain't nothing I can do without this fool watching me. Ghost tells Dre that he can put in a phone call that can help him get his daughter back. Now, Dre is like, man, you know I'm working with the feds. How is it that you know you can trust me? Ghost is like, I don't. That's why Alfonso finna be rolling with you. Now, Alfonso is the dude that was on the recording with Tate. Now, keep Alfonso in mind because this dude is sketchy as hell. He walked through the door sketchy as hell. Watch his ass. So Ghost goes over to Tommy's Trap Warehouse. He's picking up all his product. He leaves out of there. He got a trunk full of them doggone pills. I mean, boxes and boxes full of it. As he's leaving out, the hood goons come in. I think it's like Scrappy, 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 Spanky, something like that. BG, Brim, all them other ones. They end up coming in there and they see all this product that Tommy is asking them to move. So they like, dang, like, what, what are we supposed to do with all of this? Tommy is telling them, I need y'all to move this way. I can't pay you nothing. No questions asked and I need you to move it ASAP. Of course, the first thing they do, well, who was this and what are we moving this for and why we got to move it this far and why we ain't going to get no cut from it? Um, two of the hood dudes, I get them so confused with their names. Two of the hood dudes is telling Tommy basically like, look here, we can't be moving this much product this fast and not getting paid for it. I'm going to need to get my cut off of this. Now, Tommy tells them that it's for Tyreek. Vincent is basically holding him for ransom for two mil and that he needs their help moving this. Still, they're like, I need to get my dog on money. BG is like, you know what? I got you, Tommy. Don't even worry about it. I'm moving for you. So eventually, the other two hood dudes, they end up giving in. It's like, all right, cool. We're going to have moved that for you. But at first, they was like, ah, well, we got kids and families out here. We ain't got no time for this. Ghost riding down the street. He gets pulled over by Detective Blanca Rodriguez and um, this new black chick, Detective McCall. Um, now, when he gets pulled over, he nervous as hell because he got all this weight in the back seat of his car. They pull him over, tell him step out the car. Detective McCall says she's investigating Proctor's death. You know, it happened in his penthouse. He wasn't there. Maybe your son seen something. They asking him, where's Tyreek? Of course, he can't say where the hell Tyreek is because Vincent is holding his ass for ransom, right? So the detective tells Ghost, we need to question him because it looked like there was no forced entry and a back door was left open. If Tyreek wasn't at home, we need to question him because maybe he saw something. So, of course, Vincent, I mean, um, Ghost looking like, okay, now what the hell? After that, Vincent stops Tasha on the street as Tasha is leaving up out of her dog on daycare. Vincent is like, oh, I just want to let you know Reek says hi. Tasha's like, how the hell do you know my son? How do you know Reek? He's like, oh, so Ghost didn't tell you. Well, just to let you know, I'm not going to uh, hurt a hair on his head. Ghost and Tommy owe me some money. Long as they pay me my money, your child is going to be safe. Tasha fired up after that. Vincent goes back to the car. Tyreek sitting in the goddamn car. Vincent going to say to them, you were right. Ghost didn't say nothing to her about it. Reek gonna say, I told you, I'm right about all of them. Now, Reek, I don't wish no, no death on no child. I don't. But Reek, you got to be taken out, son. You doing way too much. You going against the grain. So back at Tommy's crib, Keisha's over there. Next thing you know, um, Ghost comes busting in, banging on the door. Keisha got this stank ass attitude when she let him in. You already know, she don't like Ghost. She don't want nothing to do with Ghost or dog on Tasha. So as soon as he comes in, Tommy trying to tell Keisha like, look here, you need to chill out, man. We just trying to do this work so we can get Tyreek back. Here come Keisha with her, look here, Tommy, after this, we out. We not messing with them no more. Tommy tells Ghost that he got his premieres out there on the street. They doing their job, right? He needs to come through with somebody. Ghost lets him know, I got a local cat. He owe me a favor. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do this. Tommy like, is this somebody I know? He like, no. It ain't nobody you know. Don't worry about it. Next thing you know, here come Tasha busting through the door. Who the hell is Vincent and why the hell does he have Tyree? They tell her that they got to pay Vincent $2 million to get Tyreek back. She like, all right, cool, bet. Don't worry about it. We can just wash your money through my daycare. Keisha like, uh, nope, we already doing it through my business. Don't even worry about it. Um, Tasha trying to tell her, well, have to at least bring me the book so I can look at it and I can see and make sure you're doing everything right. Keisha like, no, nah, I don't need to do that. I got it. Tommy telling her, look here, we do need her. You need to calm down, pump your brakes, chill out. You ain't been doing this long as she have. She a trap queen. She know how to do this. You ain't gone ahead and chill out. Soon as they say that, um, 
Ghost ends up getting a text from Tate. Basically like, uh, nigga, I need my money now. Where you at? So Ramona and Tate are back at um, the little Tate headquarters and they basically brainstorm and thinking of different ways that they can get these donor donors to um, donate some money because Tate has a fundraiser coming up and it's going to be a truth nightclub. So they basically trying to brainstorm different ways that they can get all these rich white folks to come up off their money. Ghost has an idea to come up with some kind of au auction where they pay cash and it can be paid back by putting money into some kind of fund or something, something like that. Basically, money makes making money. Now, we all know Tate don't go for nothing that Ghost got to say. Nothing at all. But everything that Ghost say, Ramona backing him up 110%, right? Before Ghost actually leaves, he tells um, Councilman Tate, he like, look here, I got a friend whose child is being held up in the child welfare system. He's being held there illegally, and I need your help. At first, Tate was like, damn, bro. Wish I could help you. Show can't do it. Ramona like, you know what? That'll be a good photo op. Let's go ahead, take care of that. I'm going to need you to make the phone call. We can exploit how these um, child welfare, welfare places try to use kids to exploit them against their parents. It'll be a great photo op opportunity. Now, of course, that was him putting in that good work that he said he was going to do for Dre. But at the same time, it was to dig at uh, Councilman Tate because he already know that Ramona going to have his back no matter what it is that he want to do. He and Tasha back over there at Tasha's daycare. She's showing Tasha her books. And of course, they all messed up because Keisha thinks she know every doggone thing. Tasha like, this is not how I showed you to do this. She's like, yes, it is, girl. She like, look here. You put on here that you ordered 10 blow dries. You need to say that you ordered at least 100 blow dries, girl. And then you need to make sure that your vendor only take cash. She like, oh, dang, my bad. Zig walk his sketchy ass in. As soon as he walk in the office, Keisha, I mean, Tasha tells Keisha to step out for a minute. He looking at Keisha all up and down like a doggone snack, like he want a piece of that. She gives um, Zeke the money, whatever, that she has to pay him a little weekly hood fees, hood tax that she got to pay him. As soon as he gets the money, he walk out, he looking at Keisha up and down. As soon as he leaves out, Keisha like, uh-uh, Tasha, who the hell is that? Tasha tries to play it off and was like, you know, this is dude that I went on a couple of dates with. Ain't nothing like that. Keisha like, girl, bye. That nigga ain't even your type. But I know a dope boy when I see one, so what's good? What's really going on? Tasha like, all right, I'm going to tell you, but look here, you can't say nothing to ghosts. Keisha like, girl, you know, I'm fucking ghosts, no dog on way. What is you talking about? She like, look here. I got to pay him, and I've been run, uh, washing his dope money through my daycare just so I can, you know what I'm saying, keep my business afloat, this, that, and the other, and I got one of the moms here that can help me. That sent the bell off of Keisha's head. Keisha like, well, shit, how much more you think she can move? Try to go to the strip club. Epiphany got all the holes up in that slanging dope. They twerking, clapping ass, slanging dope. All on the same doggone song. <laughs> it's going down in the strip club. Um, Tasha, no, Keisha asked Epiphany, like, do you think you can trust these girls up in here? Epiphany, like, I trust these hoes in my life. Everybody out there slinging. They slinging at the barbershop, slinging on the corners, slinging at the convenience store. They, everybody slinging every doggone wear. Alfonso come walking out of a convenience store. He got a little cup of coffee in his hand. Dre walk up on him like, dog, what is you doing? You on a coffee break? You see the competition across the street over there. What is she going to do? Alfonso was like, it's cool. I'm just waiting for the competition to clear out. Then I'm going to go on over there and I'm going to take over the corner. Dre like, dog, you ain't built for this. Alfonso like, dude, you do it your way and I'm going to do it mine. Dre like, you show right. Dre ass walks across the street, pulls out a knife, stabs old dude in the heart, jigs him, and walks off like a smooth criminal like ain't nothing happened. Alfonso stand across the street looking like, dang, did this nigga really just do that? So Tommy and Ghost both got their half of the money. They finna go meet up with Vince and get Tyreek back. They ride in the SUV. Ghost asked Tommy, you know, what happened with me and you? And basically, what's gonna happen after we get Tyreek back? Tommy like, what you mean what's gonna happen after we get Reek back? What you think? Are you packing? He's like, hell yeah, I'm packing. You packing? He was like, all right then. Once we get this money, we drop off, uh, we get this, uh, drop off this money to Vincent, we get Reek, we're going to be back to doing what we're doing. It is what it is, right? No sooner than he said that, a black SUV comes up and blocks them off. All these dudes jump out. Time to getting ready to start busting. Ghosts have to tell him, chill out. It's all of them and it's just me and you. We ain't going to make it out of here alive. Lo and behold, it's Jason Serbian dude. He jumped out the SUV. He mad as hell, telling Tommy and Ghost to get their ass on up out the car. They get out the car. First thing Jason see, oh, y'all working together? Tommy, you supposed to be my boy. 
He thinking that they working together, not knowing that they working together to try to get Reek back. Um, Jason, Serbian dude, goes in the back seat, takes half of the money. He like, he told Ghost, you owe me for killing homeboy. And then tells uh, Tommy, you owe me for security, even though you've been ducking and dodging my security against Ghost ass. You owe me for this. So they both look at each other like, oh, dang, you going to pay him for some money for killing this dude and you shot up my car? He said, I oh, really, you going to pay him for security against me? Like, for real, for real? Ghost looks at Jason Serving dude. He like, no, please don't take that money, dog. I need that money bad. Jason Serving dude like, I don't give a damn. I take this money. This is about to get y'all caught up. So, uh, I'm going to holler at y'all later. This fool takes half the money, gets in his car. All his goons get in their car and they ride out. Tommy and Ghost Man is hell. They like, wow, now what we going to do? So, they still end up going over to Vincent's, even though they only got half the money. As soon as they get there, of course, his goons come. They hold them both Tommy and Ghost down. Then they bring Reek out. Reed got his hands tied behind his back, acting like he a victim. He all scared, right? So Vincent, like, y'all thought y'all was finna come over here and play me and only have half the money and I was just gonna be okay with it? They holding Tyreek down on the chair. Next thing you know, this fool, Vincent, start putting some oranges in a pillowcase. I'm like, I know this nigga ain't finna do what the hell I think he finna do. Baby, Vincent get this bag of oranges and starts beating the hell out of Reek's stomach with this bag of oranges. I say, no. He did some hood medieval ass stuff to his ass. Like, really, did you do that? I mean, he beating the hell out of his ass with the sack of oranges. Hit him about 10 good times. Ghost about to lose his mind. He trying to break free so he can get over to get get over there and get to Tyree. Ghost has to tell him, you know, look here. Chill out. Chill out. Otherwise, he going to kill that fool. This is telling him he going to give him another 24 hours to come up with the other half of that doggone money. Soon as they leave up out of there, they cut Tyreek loose. And Tyreek like, damn, nigga, you beating me with a sack of oranges? That wasn't in the plan? Vincent like, well, you also told me they would have all the money. So, now, it's my plan. Reek. What is you doing? What is you doing? What is you doing? So they get back to Tommy house. Tasha and Keisha waiting there. Of course, they look and Tyreek ain't with them. So they tell him that Vincent gave him another 24 hours to come up with the doggone money. But of course, they can't get no product from the Jason Serbian dude. That's when Keisha looks over to Tasha. She was like, uh, Tasha, you gonna say something? Tasha. Tasha says she can end up getting a product because she got to connect. Of course, Ghost is like, what the hell, what the hell you mean to tell me you got to connect? You got somebody you've been working with and you ain't said nothing to me? Tell me who the hell he is so I can go by there and make sure he legit. Make sure I know who the hell he is. She like, uh-uh, don't know. You ain't finna get involved up in this here right here. And since you can't seem to save our son, I'm finna go doggone do it. Now, Ghost is pissed, but Tommy tells him, look here, I know you mad, but if she got somebody that can bring us some product, let her do it, because my boys can move it fast as hell. Don't even worry about it. No sooner than he says that, Ghost ends up getting another message from Tate. He leaves out of there. Soon as he leaves, Keisha like, look here, I told you, we don't even be messing with these fools. They crazy out here in these doggone streets. Tommy said, don't worry about it. Soon as this is over, I'm out, I'm done. Don't even doggone worry about it, right? So Keisha's back. I guess it's like the next day. Keisha's at her daycare. Zig is meeting with her. Zig got this bag full of product that he's giving her, right? He leaves out. Keisha's there. Keisha's talking with Tasha. As they're talking, Keisha sees that the two laws is coming up. She tells Tasha, hey, look, it's the laws out there. Tasha tell her, don't panic. Go in the back. I'll be here in a minute. Keisha ends up going in the back where the product and all of that is. Detective Blanca and De uh, Detective McCall comes in. Pause for a minute. If y'all don't watch Ashley Shaw Miller, Ashley does the reviews to power as well. She does Detective Blanca's voice so doggone well. She does it so doggone funny. So, so you mean to tell me the night of the murder you were not at home? It is so Ashley Shaw Miller. Go check her out. But anyways... Detective Blanca walks in with Detective McCall and they want to ask Tasha, so we're here to investigate about the killing of Proctor at your husband's condo. I mean, at your husband's penthouse. And of course, 
Tasha didn't know nothing about that because Ghost didn't say nothing to her about it. So they like, well, we're thinking that maybe your son may have some information about, um, you know, his his death if he was there. So we need to talk to him like ASAP and I need you to make this to happen today. So they tell Tasha basically like, uh, I need you to get on the phone and I need you to meet us at this address later on or where the hell else we can meet you. We need to talk to Tyreek ass. Ghost meets up with Benny and he gives Benny the name of Igor Angor. That was the name that Proctor told Ghost that the guy he was hiding from who he was going to be uh, he was going to be testifying against, right? So Benny's like, thank you. I appreciate that. If there's anything that I can do for you, let me know. Ghost is like, well, since you mentioned that, Proctor mentioned to me about this little business that you run and I might need your help. Benny's like, okay, so how much weight you need me to move and how fast you need it to be moved? Ghost is like, I need you to move as much as you can, as fast as you doggone can. Tasha comes back and she talks with Ghost. She asks about the death that happened at his um, penthouse with Proctor. And of course, he's like, you know, don't even worry about it. She tells him that the detectives came to the house, I mean, they came to her daycare and that they're looking for Tyreek. They want to talk to him. He's like, all right, don't worry about it. I'm going to call Vincent and I'm going to let Vincent know that the cops want to talk to Tyreek. Because the last thing that Vincent wants is the police snooping around trying to figure out what the hell is going on, right? So later on, Vincent is sitting in the car with Tyreek. He tells Tyreek, look here, I know this was your plan, and I know your daddy and them don't know that this was your plan. So don't do nothing stupid to mess this up, right? Tasha ends up coming over, getting in the car. Soon as she sees Tyreek, she's like, oh my God, baby, you okay? He's like, no, mama, I'm not okay. I'm scared. I'm scared. Acting like he's scared, not knowing that this little motherfucker put all of this together in the first doggone place, right? And he's telling Tasha as well, don't do nothing stupid. So they get out the car. They're going into this restaurant. They're going to meet with the two uh, female detectives, right? Now, as they're getting out the car, Tasha is holding Reek by the arm. She's like, look here, I don't trust no laws, but you're not getting back in that car. After this, we talk to these police. We're going to run if we get up out of here. He was like, no, mama, I can't do that. They watching me, and they probably watching Yaz, too. Tasha like, what the hell? Because he's like, mama, I got to go back in the car. Tasha could sense, like, wait a minute. What, what, what the hell is he talking about? So they get out the restaurant. The detectives are in there. They asking Tyreek like, "What happened?" Because we see there wasn't no forced entry. Where was you the night that Proctor got murdered? He said that he went out and had some hot chocolate. And they was like, "Oh, it's so convenient that you went out and had hot chocolate, and you went out the back door." He was like, "Well, it's this weird white guy that lives in our um, in our um, building, and he doesn't like black kids around the building, and he doesn't think black people need to live there. So he's always harassing us, and I didn't want to run into him, so I just decided to go out the back door." Then Tyreek begins to go off on this little rant. He was like, people are just dying left and right. I just I, I just don't understand it. Like, I'm just so sick and tired of people dying. So the detectives are looking at him like, all right, you know, they sort of believe in what it is that he's saying. As they're leaving out the restaurant, Tasha asked um, Tyreek, she's like, why did you lie in there? Why did, where did you come up with this mysterious man that lives in the building that's been harassing people? Tyreek like, look here, mama, don't even worry about it because Vincent is going to kill me anyway. I overheard him saying that, that he's going to kill me, Uncle Tommy, and Ghost. It don't matter. So she's telling him, look here, don't believe none of that. I'm going to get you out of this. Don't worry about it. She goes in to give him a hug. As she gives him a hug, she sees like he kind of, you know, winces in pain. She lifts up his shirt, see these <laughs> orange potato sack bruises that's all on his doggone stomach. He gets back in the car with Vincent. Tasha acts like she's finna go and get in. Vincent like, nah, -uh, it's the end of the road for you right here. We already did what you said you need to do. That's that. Tasha like, well, can I at least see him? Can I tell him goodbye? He like, no. What I need for you to do is get on with your boys and tell them to hop up on my dog on Monday. As soon as you got my money, you can have your dog on Sunday. back. So Tasha gets back to the penthouse. She's telling Tommy and Keisha and everybody what happened with the detectives, right? BT comes back. He got everything that he made from the little um, bag of product that Zig gave Tasha. It's only like $40,000. Now they're trying to brainstorm on what they can do to get some more money. Tasha comes up with the idea that they end up robbing Truth because you know Councilman Tate is having his fundraiser there. It's supposed to be a bunch of rich ass white folks there. So Tasha's like, they all going to be carrying cash. So they're going to have jewels. They're going to have diamonds on, bling, bling, all of that. So Tommy like, hell yeah, we can end up getting the money that we're going to get from there. We can cash that in and that's what we can give them to, um, you know, to like, you know what I'm saying. Ghost tells Tommy, I need you to get two bit, spanky, 
whoop de whoop BJ, Boo Boo, whatever the hell their names is. I need you to get them the rest of the hood dudes. And what he wants them to do, he wants them to bust in a fundraiser. They're going to rob Tasha, rob Ghost, rob all the rest of them to make it look like it's a big-ass setup, right? Now, Keisha tells them, what if something happens at Truth? Then what happens to Tyreek? Ghost's like, you know what? You're right about that. Tommy like, we need to get some insurance. So he's like, BG, come here. He tell BG to come here. BG holding a box of doggone honey buns. He was like, hey, yo, I don't know how many points I got left. How many calories is on these? Doggone Tommy tells him, boy, if you don't get your Weight Watchers ass out my doggone refrigerator. That shit was funny as hell. But they end up going and kidnapping Vincent's homeboy to hold him as insurance for Tyreek should something happen at Truth Nightclub. Now, that's the one and only time that Keisha was on her shit. I get that to Keisha then. So it's the night of the fundraising event, right? Councilman Tate ends up going up to uh, Ghost, and he's like, Ghost, can I get a word with you for a minute? He's like, look here, I just want to thank you for getting all the money back. My accountant said that all the money was back in, my, um, in the... Um, you know, for the fundraiser, all the funds were back. How did she do it? Ghost kind of looking like, uh, well, you know, don't worry about it. I just did it. Councilman Tate is like, I just don't like being strung out like this or, you know, being stringed along like this. So I need you to let me know, like, what was that money for? He tells Councilman Tate, don't worry about it. Now, Ghost didn't put that dog on money back. Who the hell put that money back? I can't even, I don't know if Jason Serbian dude put that money back. So Somebody put that money back in there. If y'all think y'all know who put that money back in there, drop down below and let me know. Dre meets with Alfonso outside the club, right? Now, he meets up with him to give him some more product. After he gives him the product, he tells him, I'm going to give you some more after I get some, um, I'm going to give you some more after a while. Alfonso tells Dre, oh, I ain't worried about it. I get paid either way. Dre like, what you mean by that? You get paid either way. Look here, nigga, if you're doing any side job, any side hustle, don't be playing me like that. I need to know what the hell is going on. Alfonso going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, Alfonso sketchy as, sketchy as hell. So, Ghost, Tasha, Ramona, and Tate, they all finesse in the crowd. Finessing these white folks up out their doggone money. Dre is walking through. He's looking and he's peeping everything that's going on. Next thing you know, he sees Alfonso tipping one of the security guards. And then he sees Alfonso kind of tip out the back. Next thing you know, he sees Spanky, the little short hood dude with the big old ass glasses. He sees him kind of creep in, all sketchy like, goes to the back. He follows him as he goes to the back where he lets one of the other hood dudes in through the back door. He sees them kind of dap up and he sees them walk back in the party. Now, Dre peeping everything. He sees something about to go down, right? He accidentally makes eye contact with one of the hood dudes. One of the hood dudes looks at Dre. He's like, wait a minute. Is that Dre? He going over there like he finna go get his ass. Dre end up tipping out the back. Hood dude tries to follow him back there looking. He don't see Dre. Dre was like, oh, hell no. I know something about to go down. Peace. I'm about this bitch. Next thing you know, you see the hood dudes, they in the back putting on all their doggone ski masks. Baby, it's about to go down. Next thing you know, all of them come out, guns drawn. Everybody need to get your ass down. They ain't shooting nobody, but they're telling everybody, get their ass down. Everybody got their hands up. They all scared. They tell them, I need women on one side. I need men on the other side. They pull out the bags, give up the money, the jewels, the purses, the everything. I need everything. I said everything, everything. Tell them, put everything in a doggone bag. Everybody, is this lipstick out here? I don't know, I thought I see lipstick. Everybody putting their stuff in the bags, right? Taking off all their jewelry, this, that, and the other. They get around and go. Now, Tate recognized Alfonso's voice because he whispers to Ghost, wait a minute, I know that dude. Tate yells out to Alfonso, hey, don't I know you? Alfonso like, nigga, you don't know me. I said, give me all your money. Give me everything you got, fool. So they go up to Ghost. Ghost got his hands up. He gave him his wallet. He like, hey, I want the watch too, fool. Ghost like, hey, man, I gave you everything already. He's like, nigga, I don't care. Give me the watch too. Ghost ends up taking off his watch, gives it to, gives it to him, right? Next thing you know, Ghost slowly pulls out a gun and he reaches over and he gives it to Councilman Tate. Ghost then tries to negotiate with one of the doggone robbers because he started taking a little bit too far. Alfonso's ass. I said the nigga was sketchy. I said you need to watch his ass. So he's 
as he's getting ready to leave out, he stops in front of Ramona. He's like, wait a minute. Don't I know you? Wasn't your husband caught up in some kind of scandal or something? Yeah, I know you. Ghost then tells Alfonso, because mind you now, all the rest of the hood robber dudes, they done left out. They're like, clear, clear. All right, cool. Bet. We out. He the only one decided he wanted to be an asshole and, and mess with the, everybody else in the doggone crowd. So he up in Ramona face. Yeah, I know you. Your husband did this. Whoop de whoop de whoop. Next thing you know, Ghost like, hey, man. Don't you think you're taking a little bit too far? Like, hey, leave the woman alone. Let her be. He like, nigga, I ain't talking to you. Boom. Hits Ghost with his gun. After he hits Ghost with his gun, Councilman Tate pulls out the gun he got. He like, hey, here. I'm going to tell you right now. Drop your weapon. Drop your weapon. Alfonso calls him by his name. Alfonso kind of hesitant for a minute. He pulls a gun. Like he finna shoot Councilman Tate. Councilman Tate shoots him in the chest. Shoots him dead. Kills the fool. Afterwards, he's outside talking with the news reporters and all of that. The news reporter was like, how convenient is it right when this happened? You just so happen to have a weapon and you saved, like you single-handedly saved all these people at this event. How does it feel to be a hero? And he was like, look, I just want the people to know that justice will be served and they cannot get away with trying to take over on these streets. Ghost and Tommy end up meeting with Vincent. Of course, they got Vincent's homeboy. Vincent got Tyreek. They meet up to do the exchange. As they do the exchange, they get the money as well. Next thing you know, Vincent got his homeboys. They pull up, guns drawn. Tommy like, oh, dog, for real? He was like, Vincent gonna say, oh, you really think I was just gonna let you take your son and get away with this. Oh no, y'all all finna die today. Go say, you know what? I think we gonna be just fine. Soon as he says that, Benny and his crew come pulling up. Vincent looking like, uh, Benny, I'm sorry, but uh, what does this have to do with you? What is your concern with this? Benny tells him the night that my cousin got murdered, Tyree came and brought my niece to my house safe and sound. So he got a ghost got a friend in me for life. So whatever problem you got with him, you got with me. He goes up and he whispered in Vincent's ear, look here, you don't want to go to war with me and my people. Trust me though, my dude. You don't want to do that. Vincent, like, you know what? You shall all right. Vincent. Get his people. He like, y'all get y'all last in this car coming down here messing with these nice folks. They get in their car and they get the hell on up out of there. Tommy looks at Benny after Benson and them leave. He like, thank you, because he looking all confused. Benny like, look here. Ghost gave me the name of the person that killed my cousin. He got a friend in me for life. I got you, fool. Benny and his dudes end up selling out and they riding off, right? So Ghost and Tommy, they just look at each other give each other a nod, they turn around, they walk off their own separate ways, right? Now, when Ghost get back to Tasha's house, he got to stay at Tasha's crib now because his house shot the hell up. He tells Tasha, Tommy killed Proctor. He can tell the way that Tommy looked at his cousin Benny, and he thinks that he got Tyreek to help him. He was like, come on now, that, that makes perfect sense. Tasha tells Ghost that Tyreek lied to the cops. So they put in two and two together. They figured out that Tyreek was the one that helped Tommy kill Proctor. Now back at Tommy's house, Tommy tells Keisha Ghost knows about Proctor. Keisha asking Tommy, all oh, hell, what you gonna do? Tommy say, I don't know, but uh, I just need you to know the timeout is over. Keisha like, look here, Ghost ain't gonna do nothing to you. I take Ghost out myself. Tommy, look here. Tommy say, I need you to know the timeout is over. We back at war. Y'all in the episode ended from there. Y'all, I try not to make this review as long as it is, but y'all wanted to make sure I gave y'all every little bit of detail what was going on. If I missed anything, please put it down below and let me know. I done finished my wine, girl. So I got my water. Balance. I told y'all, balance. Now this one wine. See, that's to let you know right there. I'm feeling too good. My Ciroc and my Kool-Aid. I'm ratchet, but I love it. <laughs> Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.